welcome to another episode of the high ground powered by premier companies ryan how are you doing today great yourself good good Good. we got another special guest today uh brayden carpenter is with us with the uh tracks department hello and uh brayden introduce yourself and tell us what your title is and a little bit about how you got here today yep so i work in tracks like uh like sal said and i um i am the ag technology and sustainability lead so um do a lot with our different precision offerings and, and trying to figure out how to bring the best, um, I guess, keep our guys on the cutting edge of what's out there in terms of technology and also evaluate, evaluate our in-house um, systems and make sure that we're using what's most effective for our customers. But then I'm also um, leading the sustainability side of our technology. So um, we're working with True Terra from Land Lakes. And uh, so trying to learn that side of the industry, it's changing every day um, and trying to keep our customers informed on that side too. So so technology and sustainability, yep. I don't think uh, a lot of our listeners, I know the growers would probably know, but a lot of the listeners uh, may not be familiar with how much technology is used in agriculture now. And yeah. uh, it may explain a little bit about some of the things we do um you have a lot of responsibilities, but uh, think of all the different ways that you use uh, satellite and georeferencing fields and variable rate applications. So you might explain a little bit about some of the listeners, some of the technology that we, the first part of your job, that part of the technology, then we'll get into the sustainability just a little bit. Yeah. So, I mean, I would argue that agriculture and technology go hand in hand in today's day and age. And um, it all starts at the machine level, really. So a lot of what I do is trying to help guys, um, whether it be using climate field view or maybe um, John Deere stuff, um, whatever system they may have in the cab with them as they're planting or spraying or harvesting, or if it's our guys spreading or spraying, um, making sure that, I mean, that machine is capturing what's happening in the field in terms of data. Um, in real time in real time as they go across the field um, it's it's laying data points storing in its system I mean these these machines are just big computers nowadays and um, so we want to be able to help a guy capture that data and make decisions off of it so you know a lot of that data comes through our tracks department and um, we write prescription um, fertilizer recommendations that's a lot of what um, Joe Zimmerman does that I work with there in tracks and um, so we, we take guys' yield data, we test their soil, um, and then look at their fertility levels, and all these different data points come together to create prescriptions and um, trying to help guys get the most out of their fields in terms of yield and, and profitability. And that comes at uh, kind of a balancing act, isn't it? I mean, we trying to get the most production for the least amount of cost. So there's Correct. no over-application or under-application, trying to get it just right about every time. Yeah, and so a lot of that segues directly into this conversation around sustainability. So, um, you know, a lot of what a consumer would say is sustainable or define as sustainability um, might look different depending on what industry you look at. Um, but with all these data points that we're collecting, um, we're, we're really able to kind of paint that story of what's happening in the field um, and how a farmer, from the time he purchases a, a bag of seed to the point where he pulls that crop out of the field and sells it into the market, what exactly happened to make sure that that plant grew and grew sustainably and that he could turn around and do it again next year? And um, I Andy. think sometimes agriculture takes a hit as if we're just out there shotgunning and 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 kind of cowboys doing whatever we want in the field and and it's it really is a science it's a it's a sweet science as far as um i mean we like the talking about the technology that we're using to put back in the field what the crop takes off i mean we're we're i, I was talking to one of our board members um, about this whole conversation around sustainability and and i thought it was a, a really good point that he made he said, this, this farm has been in my family for generations now. He's like, to me, that's the definition of sustainability, right? Like, we've made this, this business, this family business. We've figured out how to grow crops 
and, and do it profitably and, and grow crops that increase in yield year in and year out, that's sustainable. Like we've kept this thing going. And I said, you're right. We need to be able to figure out how to bridge that communication gap to the consumer now. Um, so I think to be able to do that, we need to be able to paint that picture with the data, the stuff that we are doing year in and year out to make sure um, this world has enough food to eat and that we can get paid for what we're doing and, and run sustainable businesses. We've got to be able to paint that picture with all these data points. And so that's, that's what we're working to do. I like how you phrased that, uh, Ryan, how you phrased it. It was what he didn't say that was implied. He said, we take a crop off and then we do it again next year. And what's implied there is that we do it again the following year and every yeah. year after that. And that's a, that's a pretty cool story. And I think that'll resonate with consumers and folks that aren't in our industry about what a, what a long-term vision, when we talk about sustainable agriculture, it's a, it's a very long-term vision about how to, how to improve the soil that we have. Farmers are kind of the original environmentalists. For yeah. sure. I mean, they really are. And um, when your livelihood depends on that ground. And it's producing capabilities, plus the fact that that they live next to people who don't do what they do. I mean, it, it you know, they, they have had to get along with neighbors for years. I mean, from from livestock and range to to the fences to to all of that now controlling what they spray and when they spray and uh, multiple passes application for nitrogen. So that's not getting away, but they're still maximizing yields and the, the percentages. And I don't remember the percentage off the top of my head, but how much less pesticides we're using now compared to what we were versus per bushel of grain produced that i would i would venture to say that that anybody is who who is on the <clears throat> excuse me anybody who's on the environmental uh bandwagon i would say the farmers probably are in the front seat on that yeah and we know so much more i mean when Braden started uh gosh you'll be rolling around to a one-year anniversary here pretty soon yeah. and whenever uh, Braden started and we're talking about this position about sustainable agriculture and and um it's a key imperative for us because we know so much more and we just had agronomy training yesterday morning every year we get a lot we have lots of training sessions uh throughout the year and we talk about uh, and ryan mentioned it you know multiple applications of nitrogen our our listeners may not know but we're trying to put more and more nutrients at the plant and applied at the time when they'll need it whether it's in a growth stage or a reproductive stage for that plant. So that's not out there in the environment any longer than it has to be. Yeah. Not only are we considering timing, but we're also adding things like nitrification inhibitors or urease inhibitors, right. To be able to um, not only put that fertilizer at the plant when it needs it, but make sure that if there's a huge rainfall event or whatever, that the, the fertilizer we just put down, stays put and doesn't get out into the groundwater or, or move out and cause other environmental concerns. So from a grower perspective, I know we talk about a matter of fact, I've got a track shirt on today. That is our precision ag department. And uh, we say that tracks is how we farm. We make data driven decisions, decisions, but premier ag sustain powered by true Terra. One of the, uh, the insights engine that run through land of lakes. Uh, premier ag sustain is how we show we farm and so for a grower that wants to to be able to show a a stakeholder or someone that's outside of agriculture how they farm how does how would premier ag sustain fit into that yeah so i mean with the partnership with true terra um there's obviously today, as it stands, carbon opportunities. There's these eco markets that are developing. And so all the data we're collecting and helping guys organize can go towards that. Um, that's an emerging market. It changes every day. So um, it's we're, we're learning together, I would say, the, the guys that are participating that in that and, and the tracks department. But um, in terms of just general data collection, um, for to be in sustain, um, we're, we're basically developing report cards for these fields. We're trying to tie a metric to sustainability, right? We're trying to be able to measure it. Um, and to, so, a, to a practice or a to product. A practice. Yeah. So we're looking at like nitrogen use efficiency. So we're, we just talked about we're putting nitrogen out there for the crop when it needs it. We're trying to protect that nitrogen so that it only gets to the crop. Um, 
So we, we take those numbers and we put it against the yield then at the end of the year for that corn plant and we come up with a nitrogen use efficiency number so we can tell an outside stakeholder, um, a food company, um, maybe a landlord, I don't know, whoever it may be that's interested, like, hey, these are, I'm, I'm not just out there trying to plant a seed and then harvest it. I'm also trying to be a good steward of the asset, the most important asset I have, the soil, right? So, um, yeah, when you talk about showing how we farm, um, it's kind of like I said earlier, like trying to start this conversation or start to bridge this communication gap of maybe what the everyday person in the grocery store thinks agriculture is and what our customers, our farmer owners know agriculture to be and what their dads and their granddads knew it to be um, and how it's changing and how they are adapting. Like I think farmers are some of the most adaptable people out there, right? Like, I mean, there's, there's new products in the industry all the time and new practices being introduced and they, they meet demand. Farmers are like any other business owner. They respond to demand. So the industry's changing. People care more about where their food came from and how it was produced. And so I think a program like Sustain and us partnering with Truterra, we're trying to help farmers prepare for that industry change and be able to respond to it and, and hopefully create opportunity, not only for them today, but maybe their son or daughter who wants to take over the operation in the future. Yeah, and if I'm a farmer today, <clears throat> I guess I'd put it this way, is that... Um, the time to have <laughs> you should have your story together before you're asked for it i mean that's the that's the worst time uh, if someone asks tell me tell me how you brought this crop to market or tell me how tell me how you cared for it. tell me this the history the chain of custody whatever fancy term we want to put on it the time to know that is before when before you're asked and premier ag sustain is a data re- record keeping tool that allows us to to start layering in history of cover crops, tillage, practices, because I think you said it there, Braden, the consumer, um, they're not dumb. They're just, they just don't know. And they're curious. I mean, people want to know, you know, what, uh, where'd the corn come from or, or what, uh, what was used on it or yeah. how, how was it grown? They're, we're just curious. I think it's a good thing. Yeah. I, th- I think it's, um, I mean, there's, there's never been more interest. Like, I kind of joke, like, especially in terms of the carbon markets, being able to help out with atmospheric concerns, like, agriculture's never been sexier, right? Like, yeah. all of a sudden, people are real interested about what happens out here in the field. And, and I know that, in, that that can make some of our farmer owners a little hesitant or a little uneasy. Like, why does, why does somebody off on the West Coast care about how I farm? And I don't, I, I understand that, and, and I mean, it's, it's different. It's an adjustment. Um, but I do think there's going to be opportunity with it. And so uh, to me, that's what, uh, we in tracks and, and, and as a, as a retailer a premier are trying to provide for our customers is that opportunity to help their, their business shift into this new age of agriculture and to be able to show how they farm. Yep. And to be in that spotlight, do these big companies that want to say, hey, this is where our products came from. This is how good we were at producing it or they were at producing it. And these are the products we that we supply to our customers. But that is a good thing for ag to get back into the spotlight. It, it's gone. It, it's kind of gone full circle where ag used to be the forefront of everything because that's that's how you ate that, you know, from, from hunting and gathering into producing your own food. It became it was that important. Then it seemed to wane as this population of our farmers have dropped down to less than 2% of the population has anything to do with actually producing food. Now it's kind of back at the forefront. And I think it's all, it's probably a good opportunity to to highlight that 2% and say, these guys are doing it and doing it well. Um, And this country has a lot to be proud of through its farmers and what they can do. Absolutely. I think my, my generation, especially, um, I mean, I've admitted it talking to my what wife. What you mean, our generation? Yeah. Our <laughs> generation, right? What up? Our, <laughs> isn't that what you mean? <laughs> oh, or as the kids say, no. sup? <laughs> yeah, no, maybe not. Okay. Go ahead, Brady. It's your story. You tell <laughs> yeah. Me. yeah. We ruined that for you. <laughs> insert insert foot yeah. here. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think we've gotten so disconnected with um, where our food comes from, right? Um, 
I mean, like, I, I just go into the grocery store and I buy some chicken to grill that night, right? And I don't think about, I mean, a lot of times, I do more than most probably having an agricultural background and growing up with my grandparents who raised chickens at times. But, like, my, my son, if I don't ever talk to him about it, he's just going to assume that, like, chicken's just in the grocery store, right? And you think about, like, globally now with what's going on with Russia and Ukraine, and some of the shortages and the supply crisis now, like all of a sudden we were already starting to get pretty interested about how our food was made and where it was coming from. And I think it, that whole conversation is going to get a little bit more intense now. Um, and, and so I, I don't know, like I said, I think it's, I think it's an opportunity for agriculture and specifically farmers in our trade territory to differentiate themselves, um, to show, um, food companies, consumers. I mean, I, I'm wondering at what point do we get to a place in agriculture where food companies approach um, the you know grain companies and say, hey, can you help us find farmers who sustainably raise their grain? Because we'd like to pay a little extra for that to be yeah. able to put that on our box or to be able to, to, to have a farmer on the back of the box and tell his far family farm story and how they've transitioned to no-till and cover crops and have increased their yields or whatever it is. So, Well, Braden's putting us at the uh, forefront of those times because um, you are in uh, uh, new ground, no pun intended, but, but uh, we are leading, we're trying to lead the industry that we're in as far as Premier Ag is concerned, and they can contact us at premierag.com. Any grower that has uh, more questions or wants to know more about opportunities to participate in Premier Ag Sustain. And uh, we've got some neat things coming here in 2022, which we're not ready to talk about yet. But um, there's also carbon offers and other things that uh, growers can, can work with uh, you on as well. Well, Ryan, that's all I've got. Do you have anything else? No, Braden, thanks for coming. And, uh, yeah, it's exciting to see where we're going with this. That's another episode of, of uh, The High Ground, powered by Premier Companies. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. See you.